My first guest tonight, and we should get a guest out here. That's what we're here for. Well, by the way, we have Paul Rodriguez with us and Helen O'Connell later. Uh, he's followed Night Shift, Michael Keaton, with Mr. Mom. He's got a title role in the Johnny Dangerously. It's a spoof on gangster movies, which opens uh, nationally on November 21st. Would you welcome, please, Michael Keaton. <laughs> That? Is that a first? That's a first. I just won ten dollars from my brother. Twenty-two years we've been doing this show. That's the first time I've seen an entrance like that. Not oh, yeah. bad. Thank you. Did you? I used to be able to do that when I was a kid. I used to be able to walk from the goal line, I'm out of breath, to yeah. the fifty-yard line. And uh, my brother and I used to be able to do it at the same time. He's gonna be. I know he can't do it anymore, so I just wanted to show him. That I can Did you used to do gymnastics? That's, that's, kind of. That's yeah. not easy to do. Yeah. Yeah, well, great entrance, though. Thank you. It's nice you, to meet you. Can you see people at home who just at that moment tuned in? <laughs> and, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. They're already on the phone to the TV repairman. We've got a bad image here. So you spoke of your brother. You, your brother is one of seven of you, as I, as I understand it? Right. Seven, seven kids. That's a big family. A lot of kids. Yeah, Irish what? Catholic family. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Where do you fit into the... I guess uh, that's for appropriation. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you fit into the cycle there? On the bottom. The last? Yeah, that's very, it's kind of an odd place to be. Yeah, by then your folks are getting pretty bored with the whole thing. That's, <laughs> that's, right. that's, right. that's, that's exactly right. I was, uh, I was a middle child and... Uh, that's hard, actually. That's what they say. I don't know. I had the hand-me-downs. Yeah. And uh, I had an older sister, which was really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bad joke. We go for anything here, you must understand. Um, was, it, was it really kind of tough? What, uh, was, what was the age range? Well, I have a sister who, well, she's not going to like this. Well, you don't have to. Will. Okay, but I have a sister who's really old. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, it's a big gap, but they were like two, three years apart. Yeah. Uh, my, my next sister up was, I guess, two and a half years older than myself. The bottom is uh, in an interesting place to be. It's kind of great because you get a lot of uh, affection, but you, yeah. my family is very fast. Very quick, you know, and uh, at the table, you had to work real quick to get your stuff in. Food, yeah. Yeah, not only, f yeah, food and humor. If you wanted to be Talk funny. Talk or anything else. You had to shoot real fast. And I was, somebody, somebody told me about this the other day, and I had forgotten it. When I was very young, uh, I used to have a pretty bad temper. I still have a pretty bad temper, but I used to, the way I expressed it was, this is very strange, and I'm sure shrinks all over the country are going to have a great time with this. I used to express my anger by whom whoever I was mad at, I would throw their shoes down the steps. We lived in a big old farmhouse, kind right. of, a, and I would go up the back kitchen, and I, I would so, be so frustrated, I'd go up and I'd grab the shoes out of my, if I was mad at my brother, I'd go, to his, I'd go get his shoes, and I'd wail them down the bottom of the steps, and the only way they'd know who I was mad at is I'd just check the shoes and go. <laughs> <laughs> so they knew immediately? Must be me. Did you ever look into that at all, from, aside from a oh, psychological standpoint, to see where that, where that came from? Uh, no, I don't know what happened. I, I think, you know, I didn't want to do anything physical to them, also, I know my brothers would kick my butt if I did, you know. I would guess one of the nice things of being um, a younger child of seven is that when you went through school, they'd already, and they could help a little yeah, bit along exactly. the way. And... Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, except I was horrible at math. Any of them, uh, any other kids in the family going to uh, the entertainment no, business? No, just me. The only one, um, uh, they're very, f actually, seriously, very funny people. And uh, I was the only one who figured out I could make a living, I think. Yeah. Uh, most of the guys I grew up with were funnier than me, though. Is yeah. that true with you? Did you, you know, still know some guys who... Oh, yeah, I hang out with guys that seem to be doing something Hysterical, all the time. right? But very few of them, that, uh, none of them that I know went into... They no. became doctors, they became uh, lawyers, attorneys. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or some of my friends went to prison. You think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of yeah. nice to know somebody in the slammer, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I can help you. I don't know why. What'd you do, as you mentioned uh, before you were an actor, what'd you do to support yourself? Oh, Most that's... actors do a little bit of everything. Waiting tables, right. Uh, right. salespeople. I sold vacuum cleaners for a while. How was that? Miserable, because if you have any sense of pride, and you cannot <laughs> take rejection. I don't know how door-to-door -door salesmen would do it. Yeah. Because you just, you know, you get your little speech. Did you do the Hi, whole thing? Hi, I'm working with the songs. Yeah. And the door right in your face. Did you th throw the dirt down and do all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You'd get in, and well, if you'd ever get in, but I could never hold any of my job. I, I mean, I would hold jobs because I worked since I was 15. I, yeah. I, ambition was no problem. Ability was the problem. I was never any, <laughs> never any good at yeah. anything. What did you What did you give a shot at? I did everything. I sold ice cream off a truck. I drove a cab. I uh, worked construction, kind of construction. I yeah. worked with a survey crew, and uh, did everything. Worked in an Indian reservation for a couple of months. Yeah, that was, yeah. It was really, really tough. You know what I? You know who I worked for? Yeah. You mentioned him earlier. Was uh, Mr. Rogers? I was Fred Rogers? Show. Yeah. 
I did, square business. I worked for him, a very nice man. I know he is. He said, don't we had him on the show once because we've done a couple of takeoffs and we said, maybe we ought to have Fred out here <laughs> Just <laughs> and set the record straight. Yeah, you know what I used to do? For those of you watching, if you watch, you may see my skills. You. I was Charlie for a while in the back. I used to wait for my cue and I used to be Charlie and I'd, I'd click the switch and Charlie would come out and he'd, he'd talk to Charlie, which is a little strange. Yeah. <laughs> and I would, really try, I would really try to get creative with it. That was the other thing. I'd be on the other side saying, I'm not just gonna sit here all day and turn a switch. So I'd, I'd move it back and forth, and they'd get very upset and go, Mike, what the hell are you moving the switch for? <laughs> and bring Charlie out. You know what else I did? I, uh, I used to work for uh, a news station. I mean, this, this television station I worked for, I would also floor the news, you know, floor manage the news. Right. Ooh, I was real bad at bad, that. Bad, huh? Real bad. Good thing you got into acting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they would, I would give cues. I'd forget, and I'd go over there and give a cue from the other side of the room. And these guys, you know, <laughs> see, a, see a lot of newscasters sitting like this. And suddenly, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Are, are we on? Yes. How are you there? <laughs> I'm here on the side going. Okay. Somebody said you were, we're going to show a clip here from, uh, from the, you, you were a, a fan of uh, gangster a major movies? major fan. I yeah. was too. Uh, the old George Raft, Jimmy Cagney, Edward G. Robinson. Everybody had a hat. That's Everybody right. had a hat. Was, yeah, on a dark shirt or a white on white or a white yeah. tie on a black shirt. Yeah. Who was your favorite? Uh, Cagney. Cagney. Uh, yeah. He's my favorite, not just because, not in the gangster uh, realm. He's one of my idols. Top of the world, Ma. Yeah. Remember that? Greatest. On top of that water tower at the end. What was the name of that? White, white Heat. White Heat, yeah. Top of the world, Ma. Yeah. Mm. Well, you remember the scene? Ma's where he dead. Hmm. Gets... <laughs> Excuse me, I get caught. <laughs> Oh, he's dead. He used to get those headaches, remember? Oh, he's terrible headaches. Terrible yes. headaches. You know, he was an awful guy in that movie, but people bought him. Yeah, because you liked him. There's an old John Garfield movie, speaking of headaches. Remember, remember uh, is it Heart and Soul or Body and Soul, where he's the boxer? Yeah. And at Cleveland, uh, I forget the actor's name, uh, black actor, um, he, he, he beats this guy up so badly, he causes brain damage to him, and out of guilt in the story, he hires him um, as a trainer. And <laughs> through, through the movie, this is what made me really want to do Johnny Dangerously, because there are some very funny things, except they didn't know they were funny. Through the movie, Cleveland, uh, I forget his name, would be getting these excruciating headaches and holding his head. And at one point, John Garfield's walking by him and actually looks at him and says, one of these days we're going to get you to a real doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, what have you just even seen until then? What was going on? Okay, what's the film clip we're going to see here from Johnny Dangerously? Uh, the film clip here is the famous grapevine scene. There's one in White Heat, as a matter of fact. Right where he snaps out. Um, my girlfriend uh, has to get word to me that there's a, my brother's gonna end up on the wrong side of a bullet, you know what I'm saying? And uh, to get me the word, she sends out a parrot who's a very hip parrot. Parrot. And uh, yeah, and he takes the word to the prison and I eventually get to prison and things go I'll a little confusing. I'll buy that, I'll buy that. Sure. Okay. You buy that, <laughs> you, buy buy the, you buy the picture. <laughs> That's a funny oh, idea. Okay. Okay. Stopping the sample up, right. That's a very funny scene. Yeah, it's pretty funny. That's a very funny scene. I know this grapevine, yeah. We'll take a break. We're coming right back with Michael Keaton, Helen O'Connell, Paul Rodriguez. <laughs>